morning, good Tuesday evening. It's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm back with you on Weather for Weather Geeks after another April Lake Day. Today we're going to have another one tomorrow, then some changes towards the end of the week, which we will, of course, discuss in this video. But let's talk about today because it was wet and it was balmy. Uh, rainfall totals from some of our local rain gauges pretty close to three quarters of an inch to an inch, just as we kind of expected. Uh, in the lead up to today's rain event, officially at the Youngstown Warren Airport, as of the climate report, about uh, 520 this evening, 0.9 inches, almost an inch there. And check out the temperatures today. We did fall just shy of the record today. That record 61 set in 1950, officially 60 at the airport this afternoon. Not only is it warm and it's been rainy, it's also, for the middle of winter, kind of muggy. Now, we wouldn't think much of a 57 degree dew point from May through September. But in the dead of winter, this is high, and it's unusually high as well. This 57 degree dew point, this is kind of rarefied air. Here's a look at the number of hours in which we've registered a dew point of 57 or higher all time in the month of January. In the 90s, we had a couple of years with a handful of hours. Today, we're up to six hours and counting of 57 degree or higher dew points. Don't forget, this, is, this chart shows the number of hours you know, in the to in a, in the month in the month of January in total, so we're going to keep ringing up these uh, uh, values overnight tonight of, of dew points in the upper 50s right into the day tomorrow. So uh, this could very easily be uh, end up being kind of the most humid stretch in January history for our area before all is said and done. Because I don't see those dew points dropping a whole lot as we go into the day tomorrow. As of this recording, a little bit of light rain still here and there, but uh, for the most part, the steadier, heavier stuff is long gone. It will stay away overnight tonight. Uh, Shower is more common off to our north. There's some snow in the upper Midwest, but it's way too warm for that here. Down in the south, it's been a pretty big severe weather day yet again today across parts of Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia as well. Tornado watch still out for Atlanta on south and Georgia. Birmingham area had a couple of tornado warnings earlier on. Severe thunderstorm watch still ongoing this evening in the southern half of Mississippi. Let's go out towards the uh, west coast. If you've got friends or family uh, in California especially, they are bracing for an onslaught of busy weather in the coming days. Look at this big very impressive system on the uh, water vapor imagery. This is making a beeline right at California. And while they do need the moisture, rain and mountain snow in California, they're going to get way too much at one time. And this is just uh, one of many systems that will probably impact the West Coast in the coming days. And, you know, with this active jet stream aimed at the West Coast, usually that means that you don't have a big trough downstream across the eastern U.S. And that's why we're not going to see any sort of uh, cold weather pattern anytime real soon. It'll be colder by the weekend, but a cold weather pattern, a below average weather pattern, not anytime real soon. As far as the short term, our Wednesday hourly rain chances peak around midday between say 11 and 2. It's going to be raining in most spots around lunchtime. Those rain chances will gradually decrease as we head towards late afternoon and evening. The reason why rain chances peak around midday, that's when our cold front will make its closest approach. We're going to actually see a little bit of handoff here. Uh, between our low pressure system in the upper Midwest and a new low which forms across the upper Ohio Valley. As that process occurs, there could be a couple of thunderstorms, especially to our east tomorrow, out across uh, uh, central PA, down into the mountains of Maryland and West Virginia. Can't rule out a rumble of thunder around here, but I think the chances are a little bit higher off to our south and to our east. Then we'll get into a little slice of nice on Thursday with nothing more than a sprinkle. Actually, I think this is a pretty nice day with a mix of sun and clouds. Clouds went out towards the end of the day. And then here comes our second cold front, and this is the front that means a little more business. It's not going to drive in an Arctic air mass by any stretch of the imagination, but late Thursday night, Friday morning, might there be a coating of snow and some slick surfaces? That's going to be a possibility. I think we'll get a, a few rounds of flurries and snow showers into late Thursday night, into Friday morning, and temperatures will more resemble early January by Friday and into the weekend as well. Speaking of the weekend, we've been tracking a potential, you know, kind of a Alberta Clipper type system tracking in from the west on Saturday. We talked about this last evening in this video. Today, the trends have been going in the opposite direction. Yesterday, it looked more likely we'd see snow Saturday. Today, the trends are for this thing to be a little bit more suppressed off to the south. So what you're looking at here is off the GFS ensemble model. These are the odds of more than an inch or an inch or more, I should say, worth of snow um, from... Uh, late Friday night through late Saturday night, and yeah, kind of these dark purples were down to 10 to 20 percent on this model. Um, some of the other modeling is a little bit higher, but either way, the chances appear to be lowering again of any sort of impactful snow on Saturday. It's only Tuesday, so we're not going to write this thing off just yet. 
But uh, today's model runs would suggest that this system goes far enough to the south, is, is suppressed enough, that it's probably no big deal for most of our area. All right, so we'll have an update on that tomorrow on Weather for Weather Geeks. We'll talk more about the potential for maybe a few slick spots Friday morning as well. And tomorrow uh, we will uh, take another look at the longer range. We didn't do much long range. Uh, uh, we didn't have much of a long range discussion in this video this evening. Tomorrow we'll take a look at some of the fresh data for the second half of January.